Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal is breaking down the Lumetri color panel, part six, the final part. All right, so we've covered all the different areas in the Lumetri panel. There's just a few things that I think that are important on top of this that really are important. Uh, first of all, sharing. How do we share these? And the, you might notice that, little, uh, that, that the playhead has been selecting clips for you automatically when the Lumetri color panel is up. Very useful, I think. So let's go have a look. All right. When I move my playhead around, you'll notice, as I said, it's selecting the clip that the playhead is under. In the sequence menu, it's right here. Selection follows playhead. Now, why did Adobe do that? Adobe did that because the Lumetri color panel, just like the effects control panel, has to have a clip selected for you to see the color. And they found that editors might find that confusing, that they would have the um, playhead over something and no control color controls. Speed Gray just does this automatically as you move from clip to clip. So I think this is a smart one to leave on for color alone, and that's the default. Next up, is the flyout menu. When you're looking at the Lumetri color panel, and by the way, I'm in the color workspace up here, this little flyout menu has some very important uh, settings. For instance, the first one is solo mode. You're a, if you're a Lightroom user, you might be used to this. By default, solo mo mode means I can only have one of these open at a time. Even though in my curves, I have two of these here. I only have one of these areas open. If you want multiple ones open, then get rid of the solo mode. Now when I start opening all of these up, every single thing will be open. You can see I get a scroll bar and I can scroll all the way down. Uh, again, I think that's a good default to have the solo mode uh, because people tend to get uh, confused if now they're looking at a whole giant amount of things and they really just want to fine tune something. All right, that's solo mode. Export a dot look or a dot cube. The dot look is compatible with Speed Grade, uh, After Effects Premiere Pro, Photoshop, believe it or not, so you can load those in there. So the dot look is something that was started with Speed Grade. It has all of the complexity that you, you have in here that I could export this out and give it to somebody and they have Speed Grade. They don't even have Premiere Pro. So that's great to have. The dot cube format is a an, an, uh, lookup table. You typically see this as a LUT. And this is really cool because maybe you've got a friend who's using Resolve, or maybe you're sending this out to someone on the high end who's using Baselight or uh, even Pablo. Well, this dot cube LUT that you're exporting out is universal and international and everybody will be able to read this. Really cool if you're an editor and you're controlling your look, but you know that the person you're handing this to online, they're not using Premiere Pro. I don't know why, they're not but you can still get your vision and wrap it up and give it to them in a language that they understand. That's cool. Save a preset. What if I want to take everything that I'm doing here and quickly save a preset in case I have to use this somewhere else? Well, let's just try. I click save a preset and you'll see that this should be familiar. This is, looks like the regular uh, preset for saving presets and I'll call this balloon dark. And when I click OK, over in my presets, if I now search for balloon, you can see there's balloon dark, and I could drag that and put that on any other clip, and it's going to show up. All right, that's saving presets. We can also uh, turn on auto refresh LUT or look, so that if I'm actually working with a different look or a LUT, if, if I'm the editor and the colorist is actually making that, any of their changes will update here. That's dangerous if you're expecting LUTs and looks to work the way they have for years, which is I create it and no one can change this. But Adobe heard from a lot of people that they would like to be able to share these with a colorist, have them update it and control it. So you've got that uh, there as a possibility. I'm going to turn that off because I don't like that. All right, the other thing that's important is that whenever you add anything over here in the Lumetri color panel, as soon as you touch these controls, you'll see the Lumetri effect show up over here on the left-hand side. So as soon as I touch exposure, 
boom, the Lumetri control has shown up and I can enable that and disable that directly in here. So you don't really have to do anything to add it. You just touch one of these controls and it shows up. All right. Inside the keyboard shortcuts, which is in the edit menu in uh, on the Windows and in the Premiere Pro menu on the Mac, if you type in Lumetri, you'll see Lumetri Bypass Color Effects, and I've added the numeric keypad zero, which is exactly what you have in, um, let me just add this, there we go, which is the same as what you have in speed grade. So if I hold the zero key down, I can hit a before or after. With one caveat, if I have a focus over here on the timeline, Hitting zero is going to put numbers in. Same with this, same with going to a full screen. So if I hit my control tilt to go to full screen, the zero key does not work. So it only works when the focus is on the Lumetri panel. Zero works directly inside there. All right, oh yeah, one last area, and that's the libraries, which are part of uh, Creative Cloud. So if I wanted to save my dark balloons in here in the library, when I have the Lumetri panel selected, this little button down here, add look, click inside, it adds the look, it, put, it makes it the name of the clip. So I can change that name by double clicking on it and call this Balloon Dark. And now, if I access my Creative Cloud library anywhere that I'm connected to my Creative Cloud account, this look will be available there. And again, I can share this with a bunch of Adobe applications. All right, so this concludes the six parts of me breaking down the Lumetri color panel. I have absolutely not even used anything in the effects when it comes to control other than the Lumetri color panel. This is my go-to area, and more and more editors are starting to discover this. Like I said in the first uh, part, that these this is the first nonlinear editor with innovative task-based color and light manipulation controls built for editors to make it familiar and easy and integrated within the creative editing process. All right, hopefully you found this informative. If you have, then please click on the subscribe button to video reveal. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, there's a link in the description to get your free 30-day trial. Well, I've shown you how we can get great color, and that's my job. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best. Mm -hmm.